Good morning, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to another edition of uh, the Genuine Sim stream here. Hey, what's going on? Uh, it's a beautiful Sunday morning on the East Coast, but today what we're going to do is we're going to fly from Telluride Regional in uh, southwestern Colorado over to Colorado Springs, which is uh, a Class Charlie airspace. Don't anticipate having any control online during our route. Uh, but just in case, I'm going to go ahead and fire up vPilot, our uh, controller or our pilot client for the VATSIM network here. And we'll file just a little uh, silly flight plan here. It's, it's VOR, or VFR. So because we're VFR, we don't need a flight plan. We're going to be using VORs on our, uh, on our way. Nothing, uh, nothing too crazy, nothing complex. It's a simple, easy Sunday, Sunday morning kind of flight. Uh, we're expecting it to take roughly two hours. I'm gonna say that we have three and a half hours of fuel on board. Our cruise speed, uh, in a beautiful world, would be 120 knots. Uh, our cruise altitude, I'm gonna set at around 10,000. And we are VFR. Let me go ahead and select that in our box here, and I'll show you uh, show you what this looks like here. So this is the flight plan menu here. I'm going to close it for right now. Bring VPilot over here so that you can see what VPilot looks like. VPilot is what we use to talk to the VATSIM uh, VATSIM people. I'm going to click connect change my call sign here. There's our alarm. Showtime. That's the showtime alarm. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and give ourselves uh, November 501 Echo. Our type is a C-172. Skyhawk. We're gonna click connect. I don't anticipate anything populating over here on the, uh, in the controller and range section. That's my puppy. He scratches his ears a little too much. Uh, so nothing popped up there. We're going to go back into the flight plan menu. We're going to file a flight plan. Just in case anybody does come online in the controller world, they'll see uh, they'll see what's going on here. One thing that I have to do when I log into Flight Simulator 20 now is disable AI radio communications. Uh, for whatever reason, I've got true-to-life settings on there. It still populates... AI radio communications here, which means the simulator software wants to take over changing my radio frequencies. I don't want to do that. I like to have control over what frequency I'm on. Uh, right after I take off, it'll change frequency on me, and all of a sudden I'm not talking to whatever controller that I was talking to before. But let's go ahead and fire this puppy up. So what we're going to do here is we're going to put our mixture at full rich. We're going to open the throttle just a quarter of an inch. Not a whole lot. Uh, turn on our battery master alternator and beacon. We're going to come down here. We're going to make sure that our fuel selector is on both, which it appears to be here. Yep. And uh, we'll go ahead and holler clear prop. Turn our mags to both. Clear prop. Start it for a second. Try to uh, get it started up here. Uh, what's going on here? Oh, you know what's going on? <laughs> I haven't switched my uh, controller settings back from my twin turbine setup. So, naturally, things aren't talking right. So, I've got to switch my Bravo. I've been flying the Citation Longitude a lot lately, <clears throat> which basically is a twin jet. So I'm going to switch it from uh, Twin Turbine, which is the setting it's on now, to Single Engine Trainer. That's Quad Jet. This is Bravo Single Engine Trainer here. We're going to click Apply and Save, and go back. Resume. Okay, so now our mixture is doing what we need it to do, full rich. And uh, our throttle is just a quarter of an inch. What we were just doing is flooding the engine. So in fact, what we're going to do is we're going to open the throttle, uh, 
keep it on cutoff for right now, and we're going to turn the engine a few times. Clear prop. Okay. So now we know that we've just blew all of the fuel that we possibly built up under the engine out. We're going to full mixture, throttle just a quarter of an inch open. Clear prop. electric fuel pump here and uh, not our alternate air is there a primer on the system let's uh, control one here I don't see a primer but just for the hell of it let's go ahead and use the uh, use the switch here clear prop Well, that start is definitely not doing the trick. Okay, so we're going to lean it out of here because we're probably at elevation. Alright, so my logical deduction here is telling me that there's a fuel cutoff. I bet it's this right here. Pfft, duh. Okay, so we're going to go back to full rich. Oh, look at that. All of a sudden there's fuel flow. Okay. While we're here and while we're thinking about it, we're going to go ahead and bump it up to basically full power here. <clears throat> right. Whoa, I know, right? What's going on, Mr. Tenney? Good morning. We're going to lean it out of here until we see the rise here. We're going to wait to see the RPM fall. And there's the fall. All right, so we'll go slightly rich at that point here. And now we know we just leaned the engine out for our... Uh, for our altitude. Yeah, we're taking off from Telluride this morning. We can turn on our avionics, our strobe and nav, and uh, we're just going to use our radios. We're not going to really use our uh, our fancy 530s here. Flying Zebo, TJSJ to CAMCO. I am flying the big table. That's right. Uh, figured I'd do this just to give my buddy up in Colorado a little uh, a little briefing of uh, high altitude Cessna Cessna stuff. Our transponder right now is in standby. We're going to go ahead and turn it on to altitude reporting mode. VFR squawking 1200. Uh, flight level not really relevant at the moment. So, looks like we do have a two-axis autopilot. That's pretty fancy. Holy cow. I know, uh, I know you like that Zebo. It's pr that's a pretty neat aircraft. I uh, should probably get a little more into X-Plane. Right now, we're going to turn in, tune into the Blue Mesa... VOR, which has a frequency of 114.9er. So I'm going to come down here to our nav. 114.9er. And we're going to put that into the active there. We'll do the same thing here. Doesn't doesn't hurt to have it on both nav 1 and nav 2. Uh, so it's looking like it's it says due east here, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and take a guess that uh, oh the yoke hits the throttles. I see. 
What kind of yoke are you using there, Mr. Uh, Mr. Tenny? Go ahead and make sure that our compasses are aligned. It looks it looks like they're correct. And everything is good here. We've done our, our run up pretty much. Okay, got Alpha and Bravo. Yeah, it's uh it's very close. I wanna say that the gap is like this big on the between the yoke and the, the gear lever and, and trim wheel. So it's only a few inches. But I like to simulate the uh, <laughs> how tight the cockpit and the pipers are. Because those are very tight cockpits. My hand hits the throttle. Yeah, that happens a lot. My knee, uh, in this particular setup, my knee likes to do that. It's kind of funny. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and take off from uh, Telluride here. We've got all our stuff set up, our uh, comm frequency. Let's change our comm frequency to uh, 122.8, which would be the proper comm frequency for VATS and Municom. We've got our pilot client on, even though nobody's online. So the outer knob controls the left of the decimal, the inner knob controls the right of the decimal, as far as the radios are concerned. It looks like our flaps are in full. We're going to do a uh, one notch flap takeoff here at Telluride. And it's looking like I should be able to Release the parking brake and just do a pivot here. diagram back up and it's looking like I need to go left beautiful morning over there in the Rocky Mountains if I do say so When we're taxing, it's it's un unless there's a wind situation going on, I just keep my hands off the controls uh, as far as the air goes. I just use my feet, and at this point, my heels are on the pedals. Okay, so we're going to take a left here, crossing the uh, line into the movement areas. Yeah, it's it's got really good graphics. Um, my only complaint is that, uh, hold on, let me actually get the winds here at Telluride. That way I know I'm going down the right way. Oh, wind's calm. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> it looks like I'd be doing a back taxi regardless. Right, Getting moving again here. Yeah, the X-Plane uh, aircraft, as far as the instruments and things like that, the X-Plane aircraft are way better, but the scenery in Flight Simulator 20 is just unbeatable. Absolutely. Now, Tyson, don't do that to me right now. Please. Hey! No. What's up, big boy? Do you just want love? You just want some love. Oh, I'm way off center. You distracted me, puppy. No. Hey, what are you doing? 
stinker. Oh, it must be uh, going up a slight incline here. It's taking some power to taxi. That's good though. That means going down the slope will get a uh, we'll get a good boost. So we're coming up here to the threshold of runway 27, which means uh, after we take off, we're going to do an about face for our easterly heading because uh, we'll be heading west upon takeoff. We're going to stop here at the bars and do our check, pre-takeoff check. Sea gumps, car beat is off. Our uh, Fuel pump is on. Mixture, undercarriage, props, switches. We're going to turn off our taxi light and turn on our landing light. I believe everything is set. So that's our, uh, let's do our lights camera action. Lights are set. Camera, we're squawking 1200 in altitude reporting mode. And action. Ladies and gentlemen, put your seat belts on, tray tables and seat backs in their upright and locked positions, and uh, prepare for takeoff. Telluride traffic, Cessna 501 Echo, departing runway 27, Telluride. Do a little broadcast there on the uh, on the Unicom channel. Well, it looks like we got somebody over there at the uh, at the gate. Joel PR. He might be watching. I don't know. Oh, you know what? I might be on the wrong server too. He's in a citation. That's pretty nice. So uh, we're I'm gonna put in a little left rudder here. So the winds might not be entirely calm. And we're almost at our rotate speed, which is about 55 knots. So we'll start to slowly pull back here. We're still at full power. Trim the aircraft for a uh, for a climb. Keep the nose down. Get our speed up. Oh, we don't want to descend though. We'll start to trim the nose up. There we go. Still have our flaps in for right now until we're 500 feet. Just using the rudder. Yeah, make sure the gear is down. <laughs> All right, so uh, we're almost at a uh, reasonable altitude here. As far as AGL, the uh, the ground kind of dropped out from underneath us. So that's what the airport at Telluride looks like from from the air. We'll go ahead and bring our flaps up here. The nose is going to want to drop a little bit, but that's okay because our speed will increase. All right, so let's go ahead and make left traffic here. Gonna keep a little left rudder in there. Telluride traffic, Cessna 501 making left traffic. Telluride. And we're gonna try to climb up to, uh, climb up to about 10,000. Go ahead and start trimming, keep that nose down. As the aircraft increases speed, the nose is going to want to uh, to pick up there on us. Telluride's a beautiful airport. Absolutely.
do another uh, external look here in a second. Try it in a B1900. Oh, that sounds like fun. Don't tease me there, John. Below there, we can see the valley. We're still trying to get about a 500 foot a minute climb there, as you can see on our, uh, our vertical speed. So things are looking good for a uh, 10,000 foot departure. And it's looking like, uh, as far as our VOR is concerned, we're going to need to dial that in here. Let's go ahead and find our radial. It's looking like our radial is uh, 44 degrees. So we're going to hop back in the cockpit. Find our uh, VOR here and we're going to put it at about 44 degrees. I'd say that's about right. Okay, so it's telling us that we need to turn left or to here. And we're going to trim the nose up. Well, it's going to be a little difficult to climb out of these canyons in a 172, but, uh, See what we can do here. We're going to lean the engine just a hair. Try to get some more oomph out of her. He did it in real life. Oh, that's cool. That's very cool. So it's looking like what we're going to have to do here is make a uh, slight right turn. We just want to stay away from the terrain. Right now we do not have enough power or uh, climb to get above any of that stuff. We don't want to lose any altitude. We're working really hard to gain the altitude that we have. The, uh, the city of Telluride proper there. The Cessna has a service ceiling of about 14,000 feet, so we are going to be pushing this aircraft to its limits uh, as we try to get out of here. We still have a, a pretty steady climb, I'm trying to keep it right around 500 feet a minute. But what it's looking like is it may take us another uh, another lap here. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's make a left turn, and it's okay, you know, it's okay to. Uh, to take as many laps as it needs to get to the right altitude. We just don't want to lose any of the altitude that we worked so hard to gain. Still trying to keep our speed pretty constant. 
constant speed climbs and constant speed descents are something that uh, instructors will try to beat into a student's head. Constant speed, constant rate. It's a beautiful time of day to be drinking an iced coffee. The weather in Colorado right now apparently is still in the 70s in a lot of places, so there's not a whole lot of snow on these mountains. And our, our course would take us uh, right at about our 5 o'clock, 4.30. But we're, we're still kind of cruising, just climbing, making our nice, slow, high-density altitude climb. Could probably do a tad more trim up on the nose there. Getting some bumps. Bumps are only natural in this environment. And again, I'm trying to just let the... Uh, the rudder do all the work. There's not a whole lot of aileron input that's required at this moment. It looks like we're almost getting over the ridges here on the right side. So close. Well, there was a little downdraft. We're still trying to climb, it'll probably take it about 13,000 feet to safely get over these these mountains. The tallest mountains in Colorado uh, are 14,500. So we're in that, in that range here. These would be 13ers, I believe. Not quite 14ers. And as we come over this ridge, we'll probably get a little bit of a downdraft here. It's looking like a good exit would be to the right. Uh, a lot of the peaks behind us are a little higher elevation. Still going about 90 knots. Ooh, we're at a good thousand foot a minute climb right now, but our speed is uh, dropping. Possibly had a... Uh, bit of a, a draft there. Just come back in the cockpit here for a minute. Yeah, we're getting we're getting some of that mountain wave turbulence. A little bumpy. Okay. So we're gonna start to level out here. We'll do a little bit of nose down trim. Sort of let our speed uh, get back up. Alright, I had some more of that nose down trim. So we're coming up to 14,000. Don't really want to be too high for the aircraft necessarily. And we're going to lean it out just another hair. Just a little bit. Oh. Ooh, look at that. We're moving now. <laughs> we are moving. Wave goodbye to Telluride. See you, Telluride. And we'll come back into the cockpit here. Uh, we have our radial dialed in on our, our VOR there, which is the second gauge down on the right side. See that little line is our uh, CDI, course deviation indicator. We're still in a climb, so we're going to add some more nose down trim. Just got a 500 warning, so that's that's because we just went over that peak there. Ooh, ooh, we're in a descent now. Ooh, ooh, ooh. 
Oh, it's bumpy. You just don't want to give it too much input. You know what I mean? You want to try to control the bumps, but you don't want to fight too much. Alright, so it's looking like we're going to need to go a little bit to the right here to get back on course. And we're going to find that radial of the VOR that we're looking at, which is the Gunnison VOR. And we're still just going to try to maintain our, our altitude here. We don't want to descend, we don't want to climb, we just kind of want to hang out. Our cruise speed is going to be around 120 knots in a perfect world. It's looking like our altitude here is uh, right around 13,170. Let's take a look at that. 12,700. 12,700? Yeah, 12,715. 12,615. And we are still just trying to get back on course here. Still going to make a right turn. Our heels are on the floor at this point. Right when we took off, we put our heels to the floor. And here comes our uh, our star of the hour. Tyson, come on. Come say hi. Come say hi to everybody. Yeah. There you go, buddy. Say hi. Say, I like to fly airplanes. I, li I like to mess with my daddy when he's on final. And take off. So we're still going to start a slight right turn here until we get back on our uh, heading to that VOR. This whole time I'm not using the Garmin systems for anything but communication. Probably had, yeah, 060 will get us about back on track, 070. That's some pretty intense glare there. Just a hair of nose up trim. We're going to turn on our uh, pedo heat, which we have on. Definitely want your pedo heat on in uh, mountains. It's gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Okay, so we're on a 070 heading ish. A little bumpy. Nothing too crazy. And we're still at full power. Being at the uh, density altitude that we are, it's not really that big of a deal. We're not in the red yet. We're just at max RPM. And that's why you do the run-up and you lean out the engine on the ground. Uh, because as you climb, the worst thing that can happen is it gets richer. It's not going to get leaner until you lean it out yourself. 
come back in here and check our uh, our CDI here, our course deviation indicator. It's slowly falling back in line. And we know that we are going to. It has the VOR in the uh, in the window there. So let's talk about that for a second. Let's go ahead and look at the uh, look at the VOR here. So this flag right here will either say to or from, and that tells you whether or not you are gaining distance from the radio beacon or you are decreasing distance to the radio beacon. Two indicates obviously we are going to the radio beacon that we've chosen, and that line tells us uh, which direction we need to head to intercept the radial. Now the radial is, uh, let's go back to that here, the radial is our approximate bearing to the beacon, right? So I decided it was 44 degrees, which I put right about there, just a, a tick to the left of the, the middle dash between 40 and 50. Uh, and as we intercept that radial, that, that direction from that beacon, this line is going to go from here down to the center where that white the hollow white circle is which indicates that we are on that radial that direct uh, heading from that that radio beacon it's the old-fashioned way of navigating it's still pretty standard in certain areas uh, oh looks like we've actually started to drift a little left Go back right to uh, 060. And while we're thinking about it, let's go ahead and find the uh, find the frequency for our next VOR, which is going to be the Pueblo VOR. PUB. And that frequency is 116.7, and it's a Vortac. So the one that we're headed to right now is a VOR DME, which means it can tell you the distance from it. Uh, DME is standing for Distance Measuring Equipment. And the next one is a Vortac, which is a TACAN is a military radio beacon, uh, but it's still a VOR at the end of the day. Wow, we just climbed a lot real quick right there. We must be going over that ridge. Yep, we just went over that ridge. Awesome! Okay, so back to the cockpit here. We know that our next uh, frequency is going to be 116.7. So we're going to go ahead and dial that in there, 116.7. Oh. And we're going to have that on standby on both radios. It never hurts to have both your navs dialed in, or you can have multiple VORs in the uh, in the same system here. If you look at our our CDI there, you can see that it's almost in line with that uh, with that with that radial. We just made a hard left turn, so we definitely are about to intercept it. A hard right turn, sorry. So let's go back to uh, our roughly 44 degree heading. And that means we'll be on path. We'll be on course. Ooh, that sun glare. Oof. That is a trip. We just got a big uh, gust up, so it's easy to say that we're going over another ridge. When it comes to flying airplanes in this environment, 
things change so quickly because of the winds and the gusts and things, you don't want to make a bunch of corrective inputs at one time. Then you will be behind the airplane. You won't know exactly what the airplane is doing. You won't always be in front of the airplane, be ahead of the airplane, not behind it. So I know I haven't done a whole lot to change its configuration. What's happening is because of the environment around me. It's not because of stuff that I've told the airplane to do. All of this bouncing around. Okay, so we're about on course for our uh, Gunnison VOR. A little bumpy over here. And that's okay. We'll go ahead and look back at the uh, the CDI here. See how it's almost uh, almost the center. We're still a little bit left of it. That's why that is to the right. So if we wanted to make that fall back in line, we would just make a slight right turn. But we're pretty much on course, and we'll know uh, when we've gone over the VOR. Because that flag that I showed you that said to will then change to from. And once that happens, and the closer you get, the more that CDI is going to move because it's going to be a lot more dramatic of a deviation because we're just closer to it. But as soon as that flag changes to from, we make a right turn. And then we put in our next VOR frequency and uh, we calculate the heading to that VOR to determine what radial we need to be on. This is all stuff that in piloting you would do in a log called a nav log. Before you fly, you look at your charts and you say, okay, at, at, when I reach this point, I need to then configure myself for the next point. And you do all those calculations on the ground. That way you just have the sheet and say, oh, I need to be on this radial. And you've already got it figured out. You don't want to have to do too much stuff on the fly. No pun intended. And that's proper flight planning. A good flight is derived from flight planning. Tyson, you want to come back up? You want to come back up here and say hi to everybody? Come on. Come on. You can do it. Whoa! Whoops. She made a hard right turn. Pups are a distraction. Let's go ahead and take a look at our ground speed. So on our uh, indicated airspeed here, we can see that we've got right around 100 knots. Let's look at four flight. Four flight will tell us. Uh, oh, I see our ground speed is 144 knots. So we've got a good tailwind right now, giving us a good push. 150 knots. Yeah, holy cow, man, we're booking it. But we're also getting thrown around, so uh, it is what it is. Four flight, by the way, is this wonderful application here. Tells you uh, everything you'd need to know from the cockpit. But it is not a replacement for navigation systems in the cockpit. It is a navigational aid, only to assist with the uh, onboard systems. So it's looking like our course is a little bit to the left here. As we can see our CDI is uh, changing a little more. So we're going to try to keep a little bit of a left heading here. We're coming up to the VOR. I can tell just because I'm looking at the, the map here in my lap on my flight system. But we're not going to change frequencies yet. We're going to follow our flight plan, which takes us to that particular VOR. Welcome to high altitude Cessna flight. Uh, it's very susceptible to the gusts. You can watch the altimeter as it just bounces up and down and the 
the vertical speed indicator as it's just like freaking out getting thrown around I'm gonna give it a hair and nose down trim try to try to see if we can make our speed a little more constant here and uh, we can see that we're a little bit left of our course now based on our CDI keep giving it a little bit of nose down trim there we go but we don't want a descent we just want to we want to try to keep our speed more constant all right so we're going to be a little further left of our course so we're going to make a little right turn and this is old school navigation right here old school flying but it's something that everybody should know everybody should know how to navigate via radio beacon it looks like there's an airfield in front of us we see some rabbit lights right at our uh, 12 o'clock that's probably where the Gunnison VOR is nine times out of ten these uh, radio beacons are at airports So we can pretty much say that when we get over that field, that's when we're going to make our right turn to the Pueblo VOR. We know that we're heading to Gunnison. G-U-N is the VOR identifier. And Pueblo would be our next one, P-U-B. We're still kind of looking at our... Uh, our course indicator yeah we're way left of course right now but like I said it's going to get more dramatic the closer we get to the radio beacon now this one has DME looks like we're at 12,400 on our uh, radio altimeter but I don't see our DME here I don't think we have a DME on board this airplane. Yes, it is pretty nice to be able to see uh, what's going on when you're outside of the aircraft. I, I like that also. It uh, it just helps keep a more steady flow when you transition from that outside view to the inside view. But at the same time, uh, you know, outside just doesn't teach you the discipline that inside the cockpit does. But the scenery in this software is just incredible. It looks like somebody's buzzing me on V-Pilot here. Let's see what's going on. k traffic. So we're getting close to Denver. So we're starting to pick up the Denver Unicom. And we're also uh, close to Gunnison. See that CDI is starting to swing more rapidly there on our VOR indicator. Looks like we're about in line with what we need to be doing here. pretty close to the uh, HBU VOR. What does HBU stand for? Blue Mesa, okay. It's Blue Mesa. Yep, see, now we just crossed our course, so the CDI is indicating we got to turn a little left. And it's going to do that. It's going to kind of freak out the closer we get. Well, let's go ahead and start thinking about our next VOR. Looking like it's about 84 degrees from where we're at. Yep, now we are way right, of course. And it's going to do that. The closer we get, it's going to swing more dramatically. You know what I mean? But that flag has not changed to a from yet. It probably will in a second. In fact, let's watch it, shall we? Let's watch it and see what it does. It 
should change any second. See, so we see our indicator up here going across. That's that's telling us that there's a, a dramatic change in the radio. Kind of trying to watch all our gauges right now. Oh, yep, there it went right there. Let's see. Let me show you this as an example. So it did say to just a moment ago, and now it says from, right? Because we've just gone over the beacon, and that tells me that we can switch our navigational radio to our next beacon, and uh, we're going to be on the 85 degree radial. So we're going to change our OBS here to about 85 degrees, just before the 90, which is east. Uh, we haven't quite intercepted it, but we do know our generic compass heading that we need to turn. So we're going to make a right turn to 850 or 085. Just using my feet, just just rudder flying, you know. There's no need to give a bunch of input to the control yoke if you if you're set. Sparky, you just jumped right up there, dude. You saw me stretching and you were like, oh, I'm going over. Oh, this is my opportunity. Oh, still making that right turn. Just a little bit of a right turn there. Heading towards the Pueblo VOR. Now, we can tell that we don't have the VOR in our system yet. Sparky, hop down, bud. Down. Good boy. Ooh, oh, dramatic change. Ooh. Okay. We can tell that our VOR hasn't been picked up because we don't have a to or a from indicator in our flag box. It's just the bar, right? Because it's like, I don't see this radio beacon. So at this point, we just need to keep our 850 or 085 or 85 degrees. We're just going to say 85 degrees. 80 to 85 heading and uh, wait till it starts to pick up the radio frequency. This leg of the journey is the longest leg, so I don't anticipate us picking it up probably another you know, 20 minutes, 15 minutes. So we're just going to kind of cruise along, take a look outside of the airplane here. Beautiful Colorado terrain. Yep, there we go. We're on 8-4. 84 degrees here. It looks like we're doing pretty well here. The air has smoothed out a lot, so our vertical speed isn't all over the place. The uh, the terrain is a little bit lower. We're still at around 12,500, which is pretty good for where we want to be. We have 100 knots indicated airspeed. Let's see what 4 Flight says our ground speed is. Fourth flight says our ground speed is 145 knots, 146, so we're doing pretty well. We're doing great. Making our uh, way slowly to Colorado Springs. Nope, we're still turning left a little too far there. We're going to put some right rudder in. Beautiful Sunday morning in uh, the Colorado Rockies. And I think there's going to be another ridge that we got to go over. But right now we're kind of just having fun. Just cruising along in our Cessna 172. Still haven't picked up our uh, our VOR, and one of the things that I've noticed is, uh, as far as the software is concerned, 
doesn't the outside CDI doesn't always match the inside CDI. I don't know why that is. If I pass Leadville, let's see. I feel like Central Colorado, no. I feel like Leadville is heading to the right. Sogwash. Hank. So no, Leadville I think is further north. Yeah, it's Leadville is uh, pretty much at my 10 o'clock. Lake County. Leadville, by the way, for anybody who's curious, is the highest elevation airport in the United States. If you fly in there and you're a, a student, everybody that gets their mountain training in Denver flies into Leadville to get their mountain endorsement. You get a little certificate that says, I flew into Leadville, the highest elevation airport in the country. It's, it's really cool. It's the ugliest part of Colorado. It is. But as an ex-mountaineer, I like Leadville because it's got Mount Elbert. And Mount Elbert is the uh, is the tallest 14er in Colorado. So my buddy and I actually climbed that mountain, got our butts kicked. But uh, yeah, Leadville was the nearest town. The elevation of Leadville, KLXV, is 9,934. So almost 10,000 feet is this airfield's elevation. It's crazy, absolutely crazy. Yep, you, you can see all three of the Ivy Leagues. <laughs> that would be true. So I don't, I don't anticipate picking up the radio beacon uh, until we get over the mountains here. We'll see how that goes. But we are well on our way. We're still roughly on course here of uh, 85 degrees. Oh, you're talking about the 14ers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a big cycling community in Colorado, I noticed. A huge cycling community. I, <laughs> I've seen more people ride bikes up mountains and up crazy grade hills than I care to count. And in the back of my mind, I kept thinking, these people are insane. It, it takes clinical insanity to want to ride a bicycle straight up but I guess it's it's it beats indoor cycling USA cycling is based in Colorado Springs yep that makes sense there's also a lot of Olympic training facilities and Olympic uh, practice facilities in, in the area I can say that I saw my first curling facility in in Denver I've never seen a curling venue which <laughs> that blew me away <laughs> Curling is one of those sports that just seems like it was made for drinking beer. <laughs> just looking at four flight here, I'm going to cheat for a second. It appears like we're on course. Uh, I'm really not using the four flight for anything, but looking at the radio frequencies. Stand by while I reprimand the dogs. Okay. So we still haven't picked it up. Still feel good about our heading. And it's looking like we're going to have just a, a bit of a climb to get over those hills at 12 o'clock. Have I been to the People's Republic of Boulder? Yes. Uh, Boulder in itself is... It's like its own little uh, territory, its own its own little nation state. Uh, not literally, but figuratively, in the sense that the people there have a mindset that is far different than a majority of the United States mindsets, possibly equivalent to that of Malibu or Beverly Hills. And it doesn't make any sense to me because. They're, uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like it's on a little communist territory. It's, uh, it's very progressive. 
almost too progressive for its own good. They they are constantly at odds with the state, with with the city of Denver, obviously always with the federal government. And nine times out of ten, they're not good decisions that they're making. <laughs> He said, let's go, Brandon. <laughs> By the way, Mr. Tinney, there is a hip-hop song out now. And there's actually a new genre called conservative hip-hop. I'm not sure if you're familiar with it. But conservative hip-hop, the minute something hits the fan and there's something for the right to get on the left about, conservative hip-hop makes a song and you've got to you've got to look up the song let's go brandon because there's a, a hip-hop song called that and it's just phenomenal one of the artists name is topher uh great guy um, i forget the name of the artist that does let's go brandon but it's it's, it's good that there's a balance now in the hip-hop world of of mindsets and worldviews gonna give a little bit of nose up trim yeah exactly never thought you'd see the day hip-hop would become conservative I didn't either but I'll tell you what it, it's it's a good thing because for the longest time uh, the people of our nation only had one uh, one influence there in that in that world <laughs> or yeah country rap my buddies call it country rap crap <laughs> We have a little bit of nose up trim here because we're going to have to get over these hills. It looks like we're getting some snow below us too. Some of the beautiful uh, higher elevation snow fields. Absolutely gorgeous. And let's see, we still haven't picked up our radio beacon here. But I do believe that we're on course. Yep, just cheating for a second here. It looks like we're on course. <laughs> right, I'm gonna say that one out loud, and you gotta you gotta be seriously uh, above the average intelligence level to get this joke. Okay, so Mr. Tenney says, "I heard of this book about an adventure with Schrodinger's cat and Pavlov's dog working together as a team. I asked the librarian about it, and she said it rings a bell, but I'm not sure if it's here or not." <laughs> Pavlov's dog obviously was conditioned to salivate whenever he heard a bell ring, and uh, Schrodinger's cat was a, uh, <laughs> it's, it's very deep. Schrodinger's cat is much more deep than the Pavlov dog thing. <laughs> So we're coming up to these hills here. We've got some nose up trim built in. I'm going to, I know the elevations are lower to the right, but immediately in the vicinity, the left seems like the logical choice, but in the long run, I'm gonna to deviate to the south here uh, because the hills could just be more difficult to the left. So we're gonna go ahead and deviate a little bit right stay right of that peak there that might be Long's Peak or not that would be Pike's Peak sorry Pike's Peak it's very possible in fact let's look at the map Pike's Peak was one of the visual references that I would use uh, during my flight training up there uh, change our layers here to a street map. Well, Mount Ure, Mount Peck is immediately to my left. One of us is over there. Buck Mountain. Big Baldy. Pop. 
Palmer. Yeah, so Pikes Peak is actually pretty much right where Colorado Springs is. Which, as far as I remember, is definitely a true statement. Looks like we've got a few viewers. I'm going to give a shout out to the people that are watching here. We've got Dinah Terra. What's going on, Dinah Terra? Join the effort. Joint effort, sorry. What's up, joint effort? Uh, we've got JW Tenney. My old boy from Vatsim. What up, JW? Uh, Lana Ray. Love that name. Beautiful name. Lana Del Rey, one of my favorite artists. Lana Del Rey, by the way, married to Sean Stix Larson from, uh, gosh, what was that show's name? Uh, Lord, it was the new cops. I can't remember the name. It's I'm having a brain fart right now. Either way, Lana Del Rey, great artist. Lily Redwolf. What's going on, Lil Lily Redwolf? Uh, and Spilner Niner Niner Niner. Guys, I appreciate you tuning in here. We're, uh, we departed Telluride, and we're taking a uh, little bit of a deviation here to get around the hills to get into Colorado Springs. Kind of maxing out the uh, maxing out the abilities here of the Cessna 172, but we are having fun. These are uh, my co-pilots. The little guy that's chewing on my finger right now is Tyson. And uh, the bigger guy whose face is in my face is Sparky. Sparky's black and white like a big old cow. I just have the two dogs. Um, just the two, and two is just enough, and I have two dogs for no reason other than, let's do some nose down trim here. I have the two dogs for no reason other than uh, keeping each other company while I'm at work. I, do, I have long days and I just felt bad when Tyson was here by himself. Oh, yeah. An unintentional descent beginning. That'll do it. Alright, so we should be picking up our VOR here pretty soon uh, on our radio. Hop down, buddy. Good boys. Yep, I'm so glad that y'all are here. Alright, gonna continue with a little bit of nose down trim. Just a hair. We're uh, clear of major obstacles right now. And we're gonna get back on that 8.5 heading. 85 degrees. I'll do a little chat here. Let's do some interaction. Still adding some nose down trim because we're over the hills here. I'm just say hi everyone. Guys, don't forget to click that follow button. Uh, I've reached community level, I think, but it never hurts to have more followers. I'm very grateful for all the viewership. That's for sure. Keeping that average viewer number at a, a higher rate. And we're still kind of too far northerly. We need to keep more of an easterly track here. Back on that 85 degree. A little bit, a little bit more right rudder. Oh, getting thrown around here. Oh, and then we still haven't picked up our VOR signal. Can give a hair more nose up trim. Just a, just a spin on the, on the wheel. In case anybody's wondering at home, my control devices are the uh, Honeycomb Bravo here, which is this lovely throttle quadrant, and the Honeycomb Alpha here, which is my uh, yoke 
It's got some really neat features to it. Uh, I like the Honeycomb products. They're having some supply chain issues right now, as are a majority of uh, American manufacturers. But nothing that we can't overcome in time. And when they release their Charlie rudder pedals, I will uh, I'll be sure to get those as well. Right now I'm using Logitech rudder pedals. Tell you what, I saw kind of a rudimentary, uh, <laughs> rudimentary autopilot in here. Let's see what we can do with this old autopilot system. I've never used one that was uh, this style. So let's see here. Selected altitude. Oh, we can select an altitude, huh? Let's go ahead and select uh, 12,500. And uh, we can heading select. Huh. Okay, so we're still level here. Let's, let's do this and see what happens. Let's click altitude hold mode. Turn on the autopilot. See if it keeps us at our 12,500 altitude. Oh, well, that's not right. That's not what I wanted. And then heading select. Oh, now that's turning us to. Uh, oh, I see. Because it's going to the bug. I have to manually move the bug, huh? Okay. This is this is a different type of autopilot. <laughs> I've been hand flying this airplane for like an hour and a half now. <laughs> it's nice to uh that's that's nice. Okay then. Okay, I can I can dig this. Hmm. Okay, so we still haven't picked up our our uh, VOR here. Let's go ahead and make sure that we're on the right frequency because I feel like we should be able to pick it up by now. We got 116.7 in that box. Let's go ahead and put 116.7 in this box. I don't know why it's not uh, dialed in correctly, but we should have it. It looks like we have it on our uh, nav 1 on our glide slope indicator. It should be in this one as well. Okay, so there we go. So it's telling us that we are left of course. So let's go ahead and change our heading bug here. And I can run the autopilot from this panel. I'm going to change our heading bug to 100 degrees. Until we intercept that uh, course there. If we wanted to, we can even make it a little more dramatic and go 120 degrees. But eventually we're going to want to get back to that 85 degree radial. I'm going to step away for just a second. I'll be right back.
All right, back on target here. Looks like we are uh, getting closer to our intercept tracks. So let's come back into the cockpit and wait to see that uh, that CDI change. So if we look down here, we know that it says two on that flag, right? We got our two there. And we'll start to see this CDI swing back towards the center here. And as we see that, and as it gets to right here, that's when we're going to change our heading uh, on the heading bug right here to a uh, more 085 heading right here. beautiful terrain. It's a lovely day. Winds were calm when we took off from Telluride. That, that should tell you ride something. Haha, <laughs> see what I did. Shout out again to the viewers. Dinoterra, Joint Effort, JW Tinney, Lana Ray, Lily Redwolf, Spillner 9999. Appreciate your viewership. Mr. Tenney thinks you're bots. I don't think you're bots. But it is possible. You never know. Either way, there's there's people there. <laughs> Check it out. The old 172. It's missing the uh, coat hanger right there in the back. <laughs> the same people are watching watching your channel. That's funny. Floodlights. Oh no way! You can turn on the uh, the cabin light. Let's see what happens. Oh, that's funny. That is funny. These are some of the best visors I've seen in a Cessna right here. They're like nice and stable. They're not bouncing around. They're not falling apart. Most of the time, they're in real life, they're usually dangling down right here because <laughs> they're so old. Okay, so we are probably getting closer to intercepting our course. Come back down here. And uh, we'll start changing our heading shortly. thing hurts my ears just a bit Colorado Springs traffic November 501 echo Cessna just about to intercept the Pueblo VOR about 30 miles from Pueblo 85 degrees So we can see our CDI is starting to, to swing back in line there. And as that happens, we're just going to change our heading bug over to 85 degrees. And we can kind of start doing that now. Let's put ourselves east for the moment. What's up, buddy? What's up, dog? What up, dog? Oh, she's a big boy. Yes, she is. Oh my gosh. Stay down. Stay. Sit, Ubu. Sit. Hey, 
No. That's not how we get attention. No, sir. No. No. Okay. I'm going to pretend like I know what you want. So now I'm going to do a little bit of cheating here. We are going to we're just going to find our bearing from where we are to Colorado Springs. It's looking like it's a uh, 040 bearing. So I'm just going to turn our, our heading here to 040. And the terrain is a little bit lower. We're still going to stay where we are. But if we were to go all the way to the Pueblo VOR, we would be overshooting Colorado Springs by about 10 miles and then be very south of it and we'd have to return uh, north northwest I don't want to do that C Cessna flights are always long <laughs> I feel like they take forever probably because they do Colorado Springs traffic, Cessna 501 echoes, inbound, 20 miles, Colorado Springs. And I'll be honest with you, I think, gosh, when did we start this flight? Okay, so we've been uh, in flight here for about an hour and a half. This doesn't seem right. This clock didn't, uh... Did I start an hour early? I feel like I did. Yep. <laughs> I 
forgot to fall back on my uh, my oven clock. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That is funny. Okay. Back to where we're at here. Colorado Springs Airport is uh, just a hair to our left over them there hills. So, we already did our VOR stuff, we learned about the CDI, we're going to come in here just south of Black Mountain, Come on in here and check our RPM. See what's going on here. All right, so there was the drop. So we'll go slightly richer the drop. It looks like we're getting inside of some airspace. So let's take a look. We'll use our fancy ruler tool here. So it's looking like we're 12 minutes out, 30 miles. Thirty miles and twelve minutes. The terrain ahead, uh average of ten thousand feet. Gonna give a shout out here to anybody that's watching. Take a look at the uh, the old viewer list. Still Dinoterra, Joint Effort, Lana Ray, Lily Red Wolf, Spilner, and Mr. Tenny. I feel like we ought to start our descent. Colorado Springs has an elevation of. 6,200. So let's go ahead and start a uh, 500 foot a minute descent. We'll change our heading to a slightly southerly heading. Uh, at least more easterly. See, so yeah, about 050. Let's see here. Yeah, 050 would be pretty good. And we're going to change our target altitude here. Down to, uh, let's see, pattern altitude at 6,000 foot airport would be 7,500. 
we'll go ahead and actually pull up the Colorado Springs plate and uh, look at the uh, airport facility directory we'll find the TPA TPA stands for Traffic Pattern Altitude. Scanning, scanning, scanning. Siri just gave me the ATIS. I'm having a brain fart. I cannot find the traffic pattern altitude right now. Dun dun dun. You know, being a class Charlie, they might not have an actual pattern altitude. Dun, dun, dun. We're going to say f do, 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 do. 1500 AGL, so it's going to be like 7500. So we'll just set our altitude here to 7500. Nope, not our transponder. Oop. And, uh, to set a vertical speed. Oh, wow. That's intense. Okay, let's go ahead and reduce our power. And we're going to go a little bit rich. And we're going to also turn on our carb heat. So one, where's our car beat? Car beat, car beat, car beat. That's alternate air. Wow, I don't see car beat here. Really? Where is the car peed in this airplane? Losing my mind. It's alternate air. Okay, 
so we can get back to we'll stay at like 1500 rpm this is insane where's the carb heat and we're going to change our heading back to uh so it's zero three zero for now. Take a look at our map. I'm gonna be uh, zero four zero still. Zero. I can't believe that I can't find a carb heat in this. Oh, oh, we don't want that. We don't want to hear the stall horn. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and let the autopilot figure that out. All right, we're about to stall. We're gonna disable the autopilot. Put the nose down. trim nose up right now because of the autopilot so we're going to trim that nose back down still trimming that nose down I see some rabbits at my 12 o'clock I think it's safe to assume that that is Colorado Springs still trimming that nose down Still trimming that nose down. See, I got fixated on finding the carb heat, and that led to an issue. You can only trust an autopilot system so much. But seriously, though, where's the carb heat? like for reals all right so we're gonna do a little bit of homework here real quick just gonna turn off the street map we'll turn on the sectional and uh, let's find out what runway has the best wind right now winds calm oof so we can pick anyone any runway really we're gonna choose uh, 35 left. We're gonna make a slight right turn and then we're gonna line up for uh, runway 35 left. climb right now so we're going to trim down just a hair and honestly what we ought to do oh we're coming up over uh, Iron Horse VOR we're going to start configuring for landing so we're going to reduce throttle we're going to do power pitch and then trim and we're going to put our flaps down on the first notch That's the order of operations. Power reduction, pitch the nose down, and trim. Because we want to begin our descent, we want to keep our descent at about 500 feet a minute. So we're going to go ahead and bring that nose up here. We want our descent RPM to be about 1500. 
So we're going to keep that nose up still. Try to get that 500 foot a minute rate. It's a nice target in the Cessna. It's a nice target on any airplane, really. Just keeping that nose up. Keeping that nose up. Keeping that nose up. And I see three five left there, right at about twelve o'clock. So we're looking a little low, so I'm gonna throw some power back in. Still keeping that nose up. This is a very sloppy approach. trim that nose up we're pretty low so let's throw some more power in Not a uh, quality approach here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and be honest about that. This is sloppy. Still trying to keep that nose down. It's a little difficult to tell distance in this uh, in this particular simulator. Okay. Start reducing the power. This is looking more like it. Still a hair low, but I'll take it. We're going to keep that nose down, keep our speed up. Getting the middle marker. gonna be right at the threshold here. We know we've made the runway so we can start uh, power to zero. About to clip some rabbit lights. <laughs> Super short. Not ideal. In fact I'd like another go at that. Let's do a quick touch and go here. Excellent short field, soft field technique. Okay, rotating. Flaps up. And let that airspeed pick up. Keep that nose down. Let's start our left turn here. Let's start our crosswind. Just 
So the reciprocal of 3, 5... One seven. That's where I want to roll out here. And we're going to do that much better. We're going to climb up to, uh, say, 7,500. Just want to be able to nail it because I felt like I set up way too far out, got excited, was ready to land this plane after being in the air for let's see how long it's been two hours almost. Okay, so we're not quite at 7,500 yet. We're getting there, get our middle marker again. Still trying to maintain that one seven zero heading. We are well a beam our point. I think right now is a good time to level out. So we're going to go ahead and pitch down, reduce our power here. Start getting configured for uh, for landing. Make our left turn flaps at the first notch. Let's see, we're at about 1700 RPM. That's perfect. We're going to make a, a solid left turn to... Three five zero. Drifted a little bit off, but uh, not a big deal. Okay. So we're going to start pitching for that speed. So we're going to try to bring the nose up just a little bit. Trying to hit uh, 65 knots. So we'll reduce our power just a hair again. Looking for that 500 foot a minute descent rate. Still pitching for that speed. Alright, man, have a good ride. Take care, brother. It's been fun. I gotta be able to nail this. It's driving me crazy. Okay, still pitching for about 60 knots. We're looking good on this one. Looking real good. Looking like it's going to be butter. Okay, so now hands off. We're at 60 knots, 500 feet a minute. This is a stabilized approach. We pride ourselves on stabilized approach, not having to do a million different things at once, but having the airplane configured so that all I have to do is use my feet, you know what I mean, to, to do the to do the approach. Winds are calm right now, so really aileron input not entirely necessary. Uh, this, but this is what's up. We're on a glide slope, you know. I, I'm literally just letting the airplane go down at 500 feet a minute, 60 knots very stable it's configured we came in way too low on the last one all right so now we've made the field we're gonna bring our power to zero we're just gonna slightly increase that back pressure just gonna slightly increase the back pressure there 
slightly pulling back on the yoke just a little bit just a little left rudder kind of kicking it kicking her a little increasing that back pressure there here in that horn that horns what we want to hear right before we touch down all right pulling back adding that back pressure all right I'm full aft elevator right now because I want to use the elevator to slow the airplane down all right now we can start adding brakes and oh can we make it can we make this exit we can all right great flight great landing on that second one let's go ahead and clean up the airplane flaps to zero uh, mixtures full rich landing lights off taxi lights on let's uh, let's go park let's go park this airplane I want to get out of here all right city of Colorado Springs now on our next flight I'm gonna take a break for about 45 minutes by the way now we're officially clear of the runway by passing these bars uh, next flight we will do, do, do we'll find some controllers that are online in VATSIM and uh, we'll have some ATC we'll do a, uh, a turbine so maybe the citation Okay, now we're coming up to an actual taxiway here. I'm going to turn right. Exited left. <laughs> Should have known. Guys, don't click, forget to click that follow button. Def B, what's up, dude? Or, or lady, or whatever. Whatever your pronoun is these days. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a right here and head on over to the GA ramp. Colorado Springs traffic, Cessna 501 Echo crossing 35 left at Gulf. Approaching runway 17 right, 35 left. Entered no, runway because I'm looking at the right, diagram. Left. Oh, no, that would turn me back onto the uh, main taxiway. I don't want to do that. I want to get out of here. Let's go up to uh, Colorado Jet Center. Hush. Cut that out. So there it is on our left. All right, parking brake is on. Avionics off. And remember to shut down an airplane, you fuel cut off. Don't use the key, use the fuel cut off. So you bring the mixture to zero. Alright guys, it was not too bad. Let's see how long it says we did here. Total time of flight, one and a half hours.
like one day take off, two day landings, it says. Okay, I don't really know how it gets those numbers, but either way, it's been fun. Thanks for watching uh, another rousing genuine sim flight here. We did tell you a ride to Colorado Springs in the Cessna 172. Pretty fun, high density altitude uh, flying and a very low performance aircraft. But we did it. We did it. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Stick around for the next one, like an hour from now, two hours maybe.